This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can save 10% off and start creating your own website. What's up everyone? Today we've got the seafaring angel, Manaphy. Generation 4's base 100 event legendary is known as the Prince of the Sea. It can be seen guarding its realm alongside its offspring Fione in its eponymous Pokemon film featuring Ash and friends. But as always, today we'll see if Manaphy made waves in the competitive scene. So let's ask, how good was Manaphy actually? And in this video we'll be going over these competitive formats. Manaphy's unique ability, Hydration, fueled its niche in the DPP Ubers metagame. With the mighty Kyogre's reign, it shrugged off any and all status, meaning it had the perfect recovery in Rest, which went well with its solid overall bulk and made it one of the few Pokemon that could legitimately answer Darkrai, as well as absolutely destroying Blissey, making it incredibly dangerous for stall. It could shrug off damage it took while setting up its signature Tail Glow, making it harder to revenge kill and dishing out a brutally powerful rage boosted assault. Its last move was either Ice Beam or Grass Knot. The former hit Dragons and the latter hit Kyogre. But most importantly, both moves destroyed Groudon, preventing it from changing the weather scot-free. In addition to Groudon and Kyogre, Giratina Origin, Ho-Oh, and Lucario were other huge base 90 speed threats that Manaphy's base 100 got the jump on. Beating out the base 95 Rayquaza meant it could scare out several key Pokemon on offensive teams. However, though Manaphy had a legit niche, it wasn't that great overall, and thus wasn't used to often. While it could outspeed the aforementioned Pokemon and swallow Darkrai's Void, it found itself unable to make much out of those turns, as their ever-present partners, Palkia, Dialga, and the Soul Dew Laddie Twins, all naturally dealt with it, as they didn't mind Surf, Ice Beam, or Grass Knot at all, and pounded Manaphy with Thunders in return. And thus, Manaphy's teams inherently had amplified weaknesses to those Pokemon, thanks to its typing overlap with its required partner, Kyogre. And since it struggled so much with such common powerful Pokemon, the upside was wasn't always worth it. Even outside those counters, Manaphy generally found itself overwhelmed by other uber staples like Garchomp and Mewtwo, making it tough to accomplish much. Manaphy also faced tough competition as a rain abuser in Kingdra and Kabutops, who were faster than everything and didn't struggle with the powerful dragons of the tier, who were many. Finally, it was often forced to rest by the powerful attacks of the tier it wasn't quite bulky enough to withstand too many of, and this could be taken advantage of by a well-timed switch to Groudon or Rayquaza, who would nullify the rain and thus Manaphy's hydration. One way Manaphy could circumvent this issue was with a bold calm mindset, which allowed it to tank the many special attacks in the tier, making it incredibly difficult to break through with rest. It was physically bulkier than Kyogre that run a similar set, as well as naturally faster than many Groudon, Dialga, and Ho-Oh variants that Kyogre regularly engaged in speed creep wars with. It could also run a second coverage move and not be vulnerable by resting. This set was threatening, but it was still flawed. Its newfound lack of speed made it struggle against Pokemon it didn't before, like Rayquaza and Lucario, and it could still potentially be overwhelmed on both the physical and special side by just about every dragon in the tier, as well as Groudon. Speaking of Groudon, Manaphy also still required Kyogre alongside it, and was entirely reliant on Rain, not being cut off. Thus, while it was potentially terrifying if it got going, it was still niche, which extended to Manaphy in the metagame as a whole. Being a mini Kyogre is always a decent role, but not enough to see consistent usage. Manaphy was actually tested in OU in Platinum. The idea was that it was a frailer yet stronger and faster Suicune that also had hydration rest. But it turns out those qualities were enough to make sure Manaphy never officially became a part of the tier. It beat offense and stall alike with ease. And speaking of OU Manaphy, it was allowed at the beginning of the 5th generation. It was thought that despite the existence of permanent rain, the metagame was faster and stronger, filled with monsters like Terrakion and Latios that would outrun and overpower it. And on the defensive side, Ferrothorn was the best counter anyone could have dreamed up. But it turns out, yeah, that wasn't the case. And Rain Manaphy was a defining, dominant piece of the early Gen 5 metagame. It was still fast enough to outspeed several key Pokemon while being bulky enough to take hits. In terms of strength, even Ferrothorn was two hit KO'd by Surf's, backed by Rain and the newly buffed Tail Glow, which now gave a plus three special attack boost. So with just one turn of setup, Ferrothorn was in trouble, although Power Whip did seriously sting. Manaphy returned to its uber home from Black and White's inaugural months, having been deemed overpowered and unfit for the OU metagame. But unfortunately, Ubers was even more hostile to Manaphy this time around. It was still either frail or slow, as it still stacked weaknesses with Kyogre. Its previous enemies returned and new ones abound. 
around. Arcea was all fast, bulky, powerful, and several of its best forms, ghosts, fighting, and especially electric and grass, smacked Manaphy around something fierce. Choice Scarf Zekrom not only threatened to blow it to smithereens with Bolt Strike, but even turned it into easy momentum with Volt Switch. The metagame was too fast for Manaphy's Tail Glow set to be effective, and Ferrothorn handled the Calm Minder with ease, though it did have to be wary of Scald Burns. Plus, Excadrill and Rock Arceus gave Sand Teams more viability than ever, and this was more opposing weather Manaphy had to contend with. Things were tough. Manaphy did eventually find some use for Tail Glow sets by equipping a Wakan Berry. This allowed it to bait in and destroy offensive Pokemon that threatened it with electric moves, namely Scarf Zekrom, Electric Arceus, and Scarf Kyogre, while using the plus 3 boost to steamroll defensive teams. This gave it some solid utility, but it was still niche. It was tough to switch in and set up safely, while eating at its team's defensive synergy, meaning it wasn't the most splashable or consistent Pokemon. Black and White 2 picked up the pace even more with Scarf Genesect, and Manaphy couldn't keep up. The new Kirin White handled Manaphy's attacks and raised it with Draco Meteor. Kirin White also led to the rise of specially defensive Kyogre, and that in turn led to Darkrai running Thunder. Manaphy no longer being able to safely swallow its Dark Voids meant it lost yet another aspect of its game. The black and white metagame just left Manaphy in the dust at every turn. In Generation 6, weather was no longer permanent, and Megas meant the metagame was stronger and faster than ever. As such, Manaphy was finally an OU Pokemon. It settled into a role as one of the metagame's premier balance breakers, which is saying something considering the powerhouses, Mega and otherwise, that inhabited the tier, especially the ever-present Keldeo, which was a much more popular offensive water, but as good and easily splashable as it was, it lacked the sheer devastation factor Manaphy had. With Tail Glow and three attacks, it could rip apart any balance team. The standard set of Scald, Ice Beam, and Energy Ball was naturally scary enough, coming off the immediate plus 3 boost, tearing Pokemon like Rotom Wash apart, but it had a ton of alternative coverage that could completely invalidate what otherwise be a counter, and as a result, often ended games on the spot. Mega Venusaur's Thick Fat allowed it to eat Ice Beam, but it would go down hard to a plus 3 Psychic. Ferrothorn was brutalized by a Hidden Power Fire, and Curum Black got Dazzling Gleam to death. But of course, Manaphy couldn't hit everything at once, but even if it did didn't have the ideal moves for a given matchup, it was still incredibly scary thanks to its sheer power after a boost. For example, even without Energy Ball or Shadow Ball, Slowbro was going to get crushed, plus its coverage often overlapped. Psychic from Mega Venusaur also hit Amoongus and Keldeo. It could also pick and choose its coverage based on its team. For example, if it had a Pursuit Tyranitar waiting in the wings, it didn't require Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, or Dazzling Gleam to hit Latios and Mega Latios. It took a good amount of metagame knowledge to pick the right coverage for Manaphy, but a savvy player would be rewarded for making the correct decision regarding what they needed to hit most and what they could deal with via the rest of their team. With Lumberry, Manaphy would shrug off Thunder Wave from Clefable and Slowbro, not slowing down at all and ripping through them before drowning the Heat Ran and Gliscor backing them up. Balanced teams were incredibly common as they were highly effective against so much of the metagame, and as such, Manaphy, with its ability to effortlessly trash them, was a consistent threat. There were even some players who wanted it banned for how utterly absurd it was to handle at times, with those kinds of teams that were otherwise so reliable, though this viewpoint was never more than a small minority. When stall teams became popular, Manaphy rose even higher in usage, as it was a stall breaker extraordinaire, and one of the few Pokemon able to threaten to sweep them just about single-handedly. With Rain Dance and Rest, it dominated the unaware Clefable that stopped the three attack variant. Rain boosted Scald's power to near two hit KO levels, forcing Clefable to constantly wish and protect, with Burn pressuring it even more. In the event Clefable did get some Moon Blasts off, Manaphy could just rest off the damage. Eventually, Clefable would be overwhelmed, and Manaphy would truck through the rest of the team. It kept stall team's usage down with the near irreversibility of its threat level, as it was just unbelievably difficult to handle. Some stalls resorted to gimmicks like Shedinja just to handle it, which just made them worse overall. It wasn't anywhere near as consistently great against opposing offense, but it wasn't supposed to be. That was a job for Pokemon like Mega Lopany, which was a popular partner. In just two spots, these Pokemon gave their user fearsome weapons against both offense and defense, covering much of the metagame, with four Pokemon still to be put on a team. Manaphy gave these teams the push they needed to break through the often suffocating balance teams, allowing its teammates to focus more on the dangerous offensive threats of the metagame. Plus, Manaphy could still pose a threat against offense with smart play. It just wasn't the game ender it was against slower teams. Overall, anyone who's used a defensive team of any kind in Oras knows and rightly fears Manaphy. It specialized in shredding them like few other Pokemon could.
Generation 7 saw Manaphy drop to Yu Yu for the first time ever. It was quick banned before it could leave any sort of impact, as it was deemed far too powerful there. But it certainly had a place in OU though. It functioned similarly yet differently to the previous generation. Basically, the Rain Dance set and the offensive set merged, murdering many popular stall teams. Water EMZ provided the extra power to not need to stall them out with rest, and this free move slot allowed it to crush balance as well, since they so anchored on Toxapex for water types and plus plus three psychics blew it away. Manaphy was difficult to slap on a team though. Greninja, both Protean and Ash, was the premier offensive water in the tier. It did a million things and did them all well, meaning it was the choice for the vast majority of offensive teams. Thus, Manaphy fit specifically on hyper offense teams that needed its setup power to guarantee they dish out a ton of damage. Greninja would sometimes falter in the face of super bulky cores it couldn't always beat with coverage. That wasn't an issue for Manaphy, who abused these teams with aplomb. Hydro Vortex was especially nuclear after a tail globe boost and if the situation called for it it could also use z rain dance to boost its speed which was usually manaphy's achilles heel speaking of fixing manaphy's speed it was a fixture on sticky web teams making full use of its fantastic power without worrying about losing to kartana and tapu koko on these teams it sometimes eschewed rain dance stall breaking as stall became more niche instead running z blizzard to blow through assault vest tangro clearing the path for its teammates zygarde and magirna sub-zero slammer was also great for for the Tapu Bulu, Amoongus, and Mega Latias that stopped its usual water psychic coverage. It absolutely 100% was required to run psychic for Toxapex though, and this gimped its coverage more than it would like against Pokemon like Rotom Wash, but being able to threaten Toxapex so hard was key like little else, so the trade-off was usually worth it. Manaphy also excelled on rain teams, which were hugely threatening, in part thanks to Manaphy giving them consistency against non-offensive playstyles where they'd otherwise struggle. Rain naturally thrived in bowling over offense, but but could struggle against bulky cores. Manaphy was able to mow these teams down, or at least blow a big enough hole for Ash Greninja or Mega Swampert to clean up. It was a big part in making Rain a legitimate playstyle against the majority of the metagame, instead of a cheesy anti-offense gimmick. Having Rain Dance on it was also great backup for Pelipper, who was no longer under as much pressure to stay healthy. It especially helped a ton in regaining the upper hand in the weather war against Tyranitar. This gave Manaphy even more depth to how it could help its teams win. It was also useful for its natural bulk, which allowed it to take at least one hit from most Pokemon. This was often huge in the sacrifice heavy games that rain teams often played, as they were not known for their bulk, and as such Manaphy helping in that department, especially with its decent speed, getting the jump on Tapu Lele, was much appreciated. Overall, Manaphy was once again used on various styles of heavy offense teams, ranging from simple Stealth Rock 5 sweepers builds, to sticky webs, to rain. It was unique in its ability to break through tough defensive builds, relieving pressure in that department, and allowing its teammates to focus on uncovering the dangerous offensive threats of the metagame. And that's it! So how good was Manaphy actually? Well, in its first two generations, it started off as niche and ubers, yet far too strong for OU. But everything changed when the power creep attacked, and Manaphy has managed to find itself a solid place in standard for the past two generations, occupying a unique, important niche in those metagames, specializing in dumpstering defense so its teammates can keep up with the fierce offense flying around. Overall, Manaphy has been quite decent. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How good was Squarespace actually? Well, it's great and a defining aspect of the website building metagame. If you ever needed to make a website to start a business, display art, or in my case, show your editing profile to potential employers, but you knew basically nothing about making one, Squarespace makes it incredibly easy to create and host your own website. Squarespace lets you purchase domain names through their service without going anywhere else and offers a large variety of templates to choose from, as well as video backgrounds to add that extra flair to your website. You can also monitor your website traffic with their traffic overview feature and schedule posts to be published in the future. You can do all of this and more entirely on Squarespace without ever leaving their website. So head over to squarespace.com to start your free trial and then when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com fsg to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And as for the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive mana fee? Would you want to buff it so that it could go back to Ubers? Or is it fine the way it is? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And of course, thank you to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.